Now what we're going to do is take a look at the interior bearing. As you can see, you could, with just the exterior walls, there's a bunch of ways to get bearing for your joists on the inside, but the architect in this case has made it very easy. And I'm going to start on this particular wall here. You can see the reason why I can pick this as a bearing spot is because it's got dashed lines on either side of the wall here. Those dashed lines indicate a footing below this wall. So if you think about a typical foundation, here's the outside wall here, it also has dashed lines, which means there's a footing below the exterior wall here, which we would expect. So we know this for sure is a bearing wall, and typically all exterior walls are bearing. But if you see an interior wall with dashed lines, that means that that wall is also bearing. And as you can very quickly see, pretty much every single wall in this house has bearing below it. So we can consider all of these bearing walls. As you'll notice too, is that I'm putting this line directly over all the openings, whether it's a door or a window. I don't care about the particular details of how a door or window is framed. All we're looking for when we're sizing floor joists is just the bearing location, and that's why we can go right through them. So now we've got the basic of our floor here and all the bearing locations. So the next thing is, now that we have it here, which way will the floor joists go? Should they go left to right? Should they go front to back? And it looks like going left to right would probably be the most logical. They're fairly equal spans going across. We can make it work all the way across here. If we went front to back, we'd have to span from this bearing wall to this bearing wall. That's excessive. And there's nothing in here to break up that span. Lucky for us again, though, the architect actually already drawn in here these little lines like this, and those actually indicate the direction of the joist span. Those of you that are familiar with blueprint reading will know that that's exactly what the architect intended. So with this in mind, we know that the joist will span left to right, from here to here, from here to here, and so on. In this part of the plan down here, we will start on the side of where the stairs are, continue through here like this, and each one has its own independent span. So one other little detail that may be handy as you're looking at how it's done is I like to also do this. You'll see this on several plans, and particularly on structural plans, where the stairwell areas or openings are X'd out. That way you know for sure not to put floor joists in that area. In fact, we could even write on here, open. Okay, so this gives us the basic layout. When it comes to the cantilevered portions up here, we're actually not going to mess with that in this particular course. We know that the floor joists are going to have to be going this direction, cantilevered over the bearing wall at this location. I'm not sure how many or where they're going to be. And there'll probably be a single or a double joist on the back side of them, something like this. And that's how we'll create the cantilever condition. But for the purposes of just sizing joists, we're going to size them based on the conventional spans. Whatever joist we pick here will end up being used for these cantilever conditions.